we be right. a thousand yeah. years Gen from genetic now? Genetic engineering is so powerful and the, uh, and the potential perturbations in the system so large that that's a very good question. I mean, we are at the point, we're talking about decades to really begin to seriously alter our own genetics. And where will that go in a thousand years, 25 years but, ago? But Aristotle said imagine that was we possible. are political animals. That was a polite way of saying we love power. I, I wish I could share your optimism here, but uh, the evidence of the 20th century and what I've seen in the past, just I can't see that. This is the longest period uh, without a major international war, m war between major powers that has occurred but as we, since, as the, we take since this, the Roman Empire. There Empire. are something like 40 f wars going on in the That's world right, right now. There are 160 some odd armed yeah. conflicts. Uh, one could argue true, there's more turmoil small. today than ever before. Uh, I think that we're we aware of more turmoil I think because if we, of communications. That, that's true. Bart, what do you think about all this optimism? Well, I am an optimist, uh, despite uh, my pessimism about the human nature and our identity to the hominids and our, and our spirit. Uh, I think in the end it will work out well. I think most of us will achieve some kind of heaven in a chip. I mean, I if you if you <laughs> try to think of it. I'd rather not, be an in a chip uh, future than in a chip. With all the ladies. <laughs> when you uh, talk about a thousand we'll years, it's important corners. that something, remember, the Black Death, the plague in Europe, that killed 40% of the population in the known world, now seems a distant, you know, uh, a shadow. Blip, a blip. And so you can have, when you're talking about a thousand years, what the trauma of the immediate next couple of centuries is not going to have a large impact on that shift. I think we'll sit in future. corners having designer drugs which allow us to be stimulated, hallucinate, uh, stimulate the pleasure center while robots and technology does all the work. Let me try it's a pretty different. awful world. I it mean. is pretty awful Let world. Let me try it. Different. Is. I agree. I agree. I, I, I see a a somewhat different trend, getting back to the discussion here, in that I think the view of hominids as, a, as distinguished from other animals is they've been tool makers. Man the tool maker. That's what differentiated, that's what's led to both the good and the bad. If you go the next step further, you ask what's the tools? And first it was mechanical, then it was energy, they're able to concentrate, uh, well, first uh, language, then energy. Language, language, language. language. Language was actually developed in response to this, and writing also. Okay. But let me get it. the point later. I'm getting at is that the key technology that I think is the one that trans goes through all this and goes a thousand years is communications. And we are now on the verge of what I think is the, another millennial kind of time scale, which is interactive education. Interactions. This other stuff has all been one way, yeah, yeah. blazing out at you. Now it's becoming interactive, and the internet itself is bottoms up, self adapting, very powerful thing. What's ahead? A thousand years from now, there can be a lot better communication, a lot of miniaturization. I see us much more together, much more as a planetary consciousness, rather literally, and hopefully communicating with other, other societies elsewhere. Do you? see the question of the next thousand years as something just for uh, uh, kind of evening fun or make a little bit of a no, show? Is, is, no. is, is there a more serious dimension? Yeah, I think there really is. It's fun, of course, because it's unlimited. If you look a hundred years, it's a little bit more limited. But the reason to do that is that we're in this enormous transformation. And things we do and do not do in our own lifetimes are actually reaching out there. For example, a thousand years, there may be no natural world left at all. There may be no primitive languages recorded anymore. That the past may be completely gone. Now that will be a, set, a stable world. That can happen, but it will not be as rich a world. So to me, the key thing in trying like to worry before. about these things right. is to, to be sure that we act in this period of time, our lifetime, when we're consuming like mad, bulldozing down things. And innovating like mad to balance Do, do you care about that, Bart? Sure, I care about that. But we're innovating at a rate that seems to exceed our consumption. We're time for a final question. We're going to take a prediction. If we fast forward a thousand years, what is the dominant, the single dominant characteristic of human life? Short answer, Graham. Well, I think that the economic uh, livelihood of everybody is the linchpin that holds society together. I think it'll go through five phases. Communications will be non-dominant in 20 years. And beyond that will become the hospitality, recreation, and travel, entertainment industry complex. The next one that comes along will be life sciences. Beyond that will become a driving force and linchpin of the society, subatomic matter, its manipulation, nanotechnologies. Uh, then energy, including fission diffusion and various permutations. Finally, extraterrestrial, about the year 3000 as we move out to Bart. the start. I don't know about the dominant, but I think 
some safe predictions are English will be the dominant language of the solar system, if not beyond. It will have conquered death for the engineering problem that it really is. So if you die, it will presumably be only at your choice or the government that runs your computer. And you can flip your switch on or off at will. Uh, and as I said before, I think we'll have achieved uh, some form of heaven in a chip. Whether you want to stay there is another matter. Edward. Back to what I said at the beginning. No man, women sitting around taking designer drugs. <laughs> Greg? I think it's going to be diversity. I don't know what shape <coughs> we're going to become, but I think that there will be a transformation that occurs and that the basis of, as those future <coughs> beings look back, they're going to see the very basics of their lives that are being laid down now through genetic engineering, artificial intelligence, and, and space travel. Bruce. Communication. <coughs> that's, what, that's what the primary sense of what an individual at that point will be in communication with an enormous array of entities and other things that we can hardly imagine. There you have it. Lifespans of hundreds of years with homegrown body parts and chips for brains. Computers doing all the work, unobtrusively thank you. Colonies on planets of nearby stars with intergalactic ships heading out into the great beyond. Who knows? But what's more fascinating is that we humans seem compelled to envision epochs long after our deaths. That such a self-aware being exists at all might make us think again about the far future. One wonders if why 3K will find humanity any closer to truth. I'm Robert Kuhn. <laughs>